Hello everybody and a very warm welcome to our service here at St Hildeberg's in the lovely seaside town of Hoylake. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We say together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We call to mind our sins of these past seven days and ask for the Lord's forgiveness in the prayer of penitence. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Collect for today the baptism of Christ. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your Son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit, grant to us who are born again by water and the Spirit, that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. Amen. Reverend Richard will give our first reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the inland regions and came to Ephesus where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No. We have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptised? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptised with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Paul, when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptised by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee 
and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You get the impression from Mark that John is the only wandering prophet in the deserts of Judea at that time. But this was not the case. Yes, he had started a religious movement. We are told he had disciples. But so had others. Further south, in the same desert, were the people of Koran, a Jewish sect called the Essenes, who traced their historic lineage, lineage back to Zadok the high priest during the reign of David and Solomon. It was this group who produced the Dead Sea Scrolls, which have given us a glimpse of Israel during that time. The desert harboured other prophets who were rebel rousers, attracting followers to either take, make a name for themselves or establish a resistance movement to banish the Romans from their land. John didn't see himself in this role, the role of a messiatic deliverer appointed by God to get rid of the political and social injustices of the time. But as a messenger, a voice, sent to bring the good news that the Messiah was about to come and the nature of God's kingdom would soon be made plain. John the Baptist is seen by many as the bridge between the Hebrew scriptures and the writings of the New Testament. The description of his lifestyle is based closely on that of the prophet, prophet Elijah who lived in the desert and was regarded as a messenger of God. And whereas Elijah met God in the silence, John's meeting with God was on a much more personal level. Standing waist deep in the waters of the River Jordan, John's message came to fulfilment. Why did Jesus go to the Jordan? Why did he feel the need to publicly make this commitment of repentance? In order to gain some understanding, we need to look at what is meant by repentance. As any of us knows, when battling with an instruction manual, instructions can lose somewhat in translation. Repentance falls in some degree into the same category, its meaning obscured by the layers of guilt and remorse the Christian Church have heaped upon it over the centuries. The Greek word used by Mark and translated as repentance is metanoia, a composite word made up for meta, meaning turning about, and nose, meaning mind or intelligence. So John the Baptist is challenging people to pivot and begin a new arc for their lives. And the act of dunking them in the water is that liminal moment to show the, that the individual has moved through, through to their new transformed life. A life in which they are ready to meet the person who was to establish God's new way of being. So we can now consider that repentance means wholehearted making, means wholeheartedly making a new start with a completely altered outlook. An outlook for the good of all not just ourselves. Repentance, therefore, is for everyone. Surprisingly, even Jesus. Remember his meeting with the <coughs> Syrophoenician woman? Through this encounter, Jesus saw the error of his ways, saw that he had not come just for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, but for the lost sheep the world. He made a fresh start with a chained attitude. Forgiveness is intimately bound up with repentance, for this is God's desire for us, 
God isn't interested in making people groan with guilt. God wants us to feel forgiven, to feel loved. So recognise your outlook. So recognise your outlook may not be as it should be. Own up to what you think. Say you're sorry. Change your way of thinking. Believe God forgives you. Thank God. Forgive yourself. And just as Jesus did, move forward in your transformed life. Amen. Amen. We affirm our faith in a God who forgives us our sins and brings us back to him in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with our prayers of intercession. Let us pray. Living Lord, you continue to be our refuge and strength, even though the world is changing around us. We bring before you those who have responsibility for public health and social order, the leaders of the nations and their governments, and especially for areas most besieged by the pandemic, for broken places, where healthcare and resources are scarce and the pandemic brings further suffering. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Hopeful Lord, whose light no darkness can quench, be with all those who go to work knowing the risks they face. For all medical staff and hospital workers, for medical researchers seeking more ways to prevent and to cure, for social workers protecting the vulnerable, for care workers providing contact and support to those who have no other help, for teachers worrying about their pupils, for farmers, delivery and shop workers keeping the nation provisioned, for cleaners fighting the spread of infection, for bin men who ensure our rubbish is not another source of infection. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Compassionate Lord, who shelters all under your wing, hear our prayers in this time of illness and infection, of isolation, fear and uncertainty. We remember the sick, especially those afflicted with coronavirus, and those whose treatments are affected due to the pandemic. Those with other illnesses and conditions which leave them vulnerable. 
those with poor mental health and all who suffer, weighed down by pain, distress, loneliness and anxiety. Especially remembering all who care for them, conscious of the risks they bear. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Dearest Lord, whom death could not hold, death is all around us. We are reminded of the numbers daily. Remember particularly all those grieving this day, especially those who are distanced from their loved ones, unable to hold their hand at the end, relying on strangers for this final loving gesture. Let us remember, in a few moments' silence, all those known to us at this time. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the, the sake of your Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ said to his disciples, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We share Christ's peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The Lord is here. His the Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me.
Christ is the bread of life. When, when we eat this bread and drink, drink this, this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. glory. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption, as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are many, we are one, one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, Grant us your peace. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts, by faith, with thanksgiving. And we say together, mm. Most merciful Lord, your, Your love compels us to come in. Our hands are unclean, our hearts are unprepared. We are not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse us and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him and that, that we, we with, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the words and I shall be healed. We say together the post-communion prayer. Mm. Almighty God, we, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. May the peace of God, which passeth all understanding,
keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. And the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen. Our service here is ended. We go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the, In the name, name of, of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen.